G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, look it's going to be cloudy today, um, 18 to 28 degrees. Um, they're saying a shower or two possible but look it is overcast outside. Um, towards the southwest, there's a bit of darker cloud so and that's often where this sort of stuff comes from so um, yeah we might get a few showers later so yeah we'll hop in nice and early and get the stew done. And um, yeah, see if we can get get <laughs> get all this stuff sorted. Anyway, see how we go. Um, last week we had um, a storm came through. Oh, would have been look maybe Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. I can't be sure now. And um, we got 25 mil, which is an inch of rain in that, and that picked up the tank out the back. Oh, probably a foot or two, a couple of feet anyway, and. It's watered the place and um, we were we did have very windy conditions coming up to that and oh driving me mad like I'm trying to keep the place neat and tidy and to keep the dust off the toolboxes and the dust off the lathe and all that sort of thing and um, this weather now where there's no breeze and it's a little overcast or even sunny like it's been the last few days with a light breeze that's good but man that wind had I had cardboard out on the heap to burn and that was getting blown up, you know, cross over to where I parked my ute and things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not that keen on the wind. But anyway, um, mainly because of the dust. So at the moment we're, um, yeah, it's, it's quite still and um, nearly humid. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad. We're, we're sort of good, good weather to come up in the shed and fiddle around. Now, what did I do this last week? Oh, shit. What didn't I do? <laughs> um, last Monday, Dean and his dad, the Dean that bought the business and his dad come out for the afternoon for a couple of hours and we run through all the stuff that I make for Queensland Tractor Spares. Um, and look, they're well capable of it. Yeah, dad's a nice fella. And um, yeah, you, you get on, you know, some people you talk to and yeah, you're talking to him and you think this prick's not listening or he's not switched on. Well, that wasn't the case at all. Um, whenever I was talking about stuff, he, he knew and he understood the process and he, he was with it. He's got a lathe and um, hoists and mill and things like that at home. And, and so he's a handy fella. So that'll be a benefit to Dean and Nikita with their business. Um, and it'll be something less I've got to do. <laughs> I got sick of making some of those things. But anyway, that's all right. A dollar's a dollar. So it was well worth doing. Um, the 31st of October is our last day in the business and Friday, this coming week, Friday, um, Dean takes over, Dean and Nikita, and um, oh, we've been doing some bloody paperwork, some shuffling bullshit around. Um, you know, company guarantees and things like that that the, his solicitor's saying, oh, you know, you've got to get rid of these before you can do that. But we got it all under control, but... Um, yeah, contacted the bank and said, yeah, this is what we're doing. Um, uh, over the years, we've run a, a, an overdraft, you know, a $100,000 overdraft for the business. And um, look, we haven't been into that for like years. Um, back in the day, we needed it to get us through the highs and lows of business. But um, as we built the kitty up over the years, we haven't been into it for a long time. So I was telling the bank bloke about, you know, we've got a sale on the business and um, we'll probably close the overdraft and do all that sort of thing and so sometimes you wonder why you're bothered because <laughs> um, oh well um, are, are you going to keep the mortgages going on the rental house and, that? and we said no we'll be paying them oh that's good because if you didn't um, because you've had a change of circumstances we'd have to go right through your income again and all this shit and I'm thinking oh it'd be good to get rid of you bastards <laughs> so yeah then he says oh well you know you've got a hundred thousand dollar overdraft it we'll have to have a look at that and see if that has to be paid out before the end and we said well it's empty yeah you, know, you can shut the bloody thing down if you want and um you've got a ten thousand dollar credit card which was just for paying bills and you know things like that um mainly for overseas purchases and things like that we use that for and um oh well you know you won't be needing that then and they're just bankers wankers yeah anyway <laughs> um yeah, Bear Co, Alan Bear, they, they, when you open an account, you sign a, a personal guarantee for the company. And um, we said to him about it selling and, um, um, 
he's got a you know, personal guarantee and we said, yeah, we'd like that lifted as soon as it goes through. And, oh, well, you can't lift that until your ba bill's paid in full and all that. And we'd already paid bloody 30-something oh, thousand of, a, of the month before's bill, but that hadn't got through to them yet. And, um, yes, <laughs> it's just a pain in the bum. And um, so, yeah, we'll have all that sorted out this week, another 30 grand to pay there, I suppose. And, and um, just little knickknacks we're tidying up, you know, running down to the solicitor to sign papers and um, the accountants. Well, we, we've changed the name. We used to have Queensland Tractor Spares Proprietary Limited, and that run Queensland Tractor Spares. So now the company is Maskell Holdings, which is my last name. So our holdings. So, um, yeah, just gin around stuff. And, and, yeah, just to change the company name, um, same directors, same company number, um, same ABN, same everything, but it's the government gets, I think it's something like $580 out of you just to change the company name. And then the business name to transfer that to Dean, um, which we've sort of, we've done, well, that was, I think that was $300. And this is just government shiny asses just saying, yep, yeah, fucking beauty, bing, 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 buddy, there you go, there's your bit of paper, piss off. And <laughs> so... Yeah, so you're $900,000 out of the kitty just um, to deal with government departments. But anyway, we get used to that. Um, yeah, you don't have to like it, but you just get used to it, so it doesn't matter. So um, so anyway, Jude and I, we're going to um, Thursday evening in at work there. Um, Dean's brother does the point of sale thing, so he's going to come and swap that over. Um, Kirstine, the lady that helps us run the zero, which is the accounting file, um, she'll make sure that their, all the pays are transferred over and all that. We'll find out this week um, how much we have to pay as in staff entitlements. And yeah, that'll be 30, 40,000 bucks because um, we've got a good crew and um, yeah, just how it is, you know. Yeah, not worth worrying about. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a big week for Lance and Jude. Um, yeah, I'll stay home today um, in the shed and do the stew and try and get my normal stuff done. Um, Dean's coming in this week. He, he does run his other business and he's had to shoot away and I think on Wednesday he's got, a, he's got another crane lift or something like that for um, putting a tower in for the um, um, ag leader stuff. So, um, yeah, so when he's there I'll try and be there on and off a bit, um, mostly mornings. And um, when he's not there, if he's not going to come in, well, no, it's me going in, I can't help him with anything really. So yeah, Thursday evening is going to be probably a late one, um, getting everything transferred across and swung across and all that. Then Friday, um, <clears throat> we, we agreed originally to, um, um, they would come into the business two weeks before settlement and we'd hang around for two weeks after, but um, we sort of did a deal with them that they come in, well, by the time they take over, Dean will have been there four weeks and um, and Nikita's been there, you know, when she's not working sort of thing. So um, so what our plan is, is on Friday, we're going to leave him alone. We're going to be here in town. We're not going anywhere. Um, just let him get a run feel for the place. We don't want to be that pair of old farts that thinks the show won't run without him. And, yeah, look, we'll, we'll um, let him have free run. And um, over the weekend, I suppose, I'll go in and fiddle and fart around. And... Um, and the next week, yeah, we're not planning on going in, but we're still going to be here. And um, like if, just to pick an example, like payday, um, if they want Jude to just pop in and make sure they're doing the pays properly, well, there's no trouble. Yeah, we'll pop in and help. So um, so it's one of those things. We, um, it's their turn to make money. Um, we've done a fair bit of training. Like, like they know how it all works. Um, Jude and I will be surplus to requirement, really. Um, so we're going to let them run with it, and, but we're going to hang around. And, um, yeah, not, not this coming weekend, the weekend after we have to be away, um, away for the weekend, so Friday to Monday. But, um, yeah, so look, they're looking forward to it, I'm sure. It's a bit hairy, scary for them. Um, Jude and I are... Look, we're certainly looking forward to retirement. Um, but, yeah, we'll, it'll take some settling in, you know, we've got to have bank appointments and bloody solicitor's appointments and accountant appointments and um, things like that. But um, uh, my little office up there, we did another run. We did the final run yesterday in the ute into the shop and 
got all the final tax papers and all that rubbish out. Um, on the last day, Judy's got the filing cabinet with our current bills in it, so she's going to put that into boxes and get it out of there, and so we can pay, make sure we pay all the bills. And um, <coughs> no, me, so yeah, look, it's a big thing for Dean and Nikita taking it over, and um, it's a big change for us, and we we are looking forward to it, and uh, they seem to be keen to get into it and make some money, and I'll feel like I've got no money. I'll be broke, destitute. I'll be down the soup kitchen, yeah, so. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's all good. I am looking forward to the time at home here. And, um, but I haven't, I've done a lot of little jobs this week but I, in the shed, but I haven't done anything major. Um, the Makita grinder, um, the grinder that's got the belt, um, the belt sander on the side of it, the multi-tool, I think they call it. Well, it, the bearing got noisy, so um, I thought I'd pull the end off that and have a look. Um, under the shaft, it's got a bearing, and oh, under the under the shaft, it's got a little breather that lets air come in and out of the motor, and um, it's sort of half sealed. So I, I popped the end cap off on the end that was noisy, and they have a bearing that's got a. It, it's just a normal six two o four, and it's shielded one side. So. <coughs> So on the left hand side, like I've never pulled this apart before, on the left hand side the bearing was sitting against the stone with the open side of the bearing to the motor which was just above the vent, you know, where all the shit from grinding and that could have blown through sort of thing. And I thought, oh that's funny, I would have put the bloody thing in round the other way. You know, because there's a, there's a wall here you know, uh, uh, and yeah, so it only needs to be shielded one side. So. But the funny thing was, when I pulled the other side off, the other one was the opposite way. The other one had the, had the shield to the motor and the, um, the open side to where the bearing goes in, the shaft comes out, there's a, there's a distinct divide there. And it could have got in, I suppose. But anyway, what I've done is um, I went to the bearing place and I've fitted bearings now with shields both sides. Um, but that was even a bit of a fiddle. Um, the, I pulled the bearings off and I just bumped them off, no worries at all, and um, popped them back on and then the grinder wouldn't run. And on the end of the grinder on the belt side, there's a, there's a, there's a little metal strip with a set of points up the top there and it's got a little centrifugal throw out that takes the tension off it. So, um, so when you go to start it, this little lever is across and it goes across and it helps the windings to get it going and then once it you know just a, a second or two into running it gets up to speed and the centrifugal weights throw out and that takes the power off that and then she just runs well i, I must have shifted something left or right or something there and um, i spent half an afternoon pulling it off and adjusting it a bit and fiddling around i've, I've got it right now um, I had it one way where I must have had it out too far and you could start it in reverse. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, that's, that's going now. Um, but yeah, I don't know why, like I, I didn't shift anything, um, but unless, you know, with the new bearings on the new housings, I've, um, it was one way a little bit, but I had to adjust it. And look, it'd only be a millimetre or so. And so that's running fine now. Um, I got all that sorted out. <coughs> I mean, the, um, Plasma Dave made some um, acrylic um, oh, faces, is the word I'm looking for. God, Blake's gone empty in the head, between the ears. Um, yeah, look, um, Dave, Plasma Dave, he made some glasses for the gauges, and um, I fitted a couple and we've taken a photo. Now, um, Dave's put a video out on how he made them, and it's just a short little video where he jumps into light burn and does a couple of circles and um, cuts one out of MDF, 3 mil MDF, just to test the lasers set properly and you know, it's gonna be okay. And um, then he cuts them out. So it's a little short video. Um, there will be a link to Dave's video in the description. You know, the first couple of lines of the description of the stew here, you'll have a link to that video. So go over, have a look. Um, 
yeah, it won't take you all day. <laughs> Give him a subscribe and um, see what's going on. Um, what we're planning on doing, or what we were talking about the other day, is those gauges that are a bit crook, you know, the face is not real good. He, he brought in a piece of black acrylic with a white, um, like a vinyl on the front of it. And it was only a little gauge and he'd, he'd actually burnt the numbers in there. So um, I've got to buy a bit of black acrylic and we're going to try and um, reproduce one of the gauge faces just to see if we can do it. So um, that'll be something interesting. I'll, I'll see if I can get into this week and buy some of that acrylic. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether this week's a good week for any of that. Um, it's going to be a busy one. Um, I also, a few weeks ago with the flow meter, I ordered some of these stout chest fittings. And look, I ordered these out of China because, because of price. So, um, so, so we have a quarter NPT thread and there's your standard test fitting. And I ordered 20 of those. And the reason I ordered 20 is I had a few different fittings I wanted to put one in permanently. So when I'm doing a particular job, I'm not ginning around, scratching through, looking for stuff. So, and look, one example would be this fitting here. And so um, I've had to run an NPT tap down this um, 3 8 to quarter um, BSP reducing nipple. So, so this fella here, on your Massey Ferguson's, on your lift cover, on your 3565 135 and that there, um, it sort of does a similar job to that plate I made last week, but um, this one, with it on, it tests the whole, like the lift cover, the whole lot sort of thing. So, um, so you, undo, you undo one of the Allen head screws there, and yeah, you just screw that in and pop a gauge on. So, so that's an example of what I've done with a few of them. I've got, I've got like 3.8 BSP, um, I think I've got a half and a three quarter and a UN O-ring and a, things like that. So I've made a couple of fittings. I've got a couple to make yet. I'm going to, the little ones like the three quarter UN O-ring ones, um, which is like a John Deere for the hydraulic pump and things like that. Um, I'm just going to machine down the end, run a tap up and make some of them. So you can just pop, a, pop that on the top of a Johnny pump and run your gauge and you know what you've got. So. So yeah, they turned up. That's a that's a good little good little thing. The um, they're only look they're cheap Chinese stuff, but they seem to do the job. And the advantage of these is that you can put them in under full load. Um, and these match the gauges that I bought the other day for the flow meter. So um, yeah, only cheap. But for what I do in the shed here, it'll be fine. And that should have once I make a couple more fittings. Um, that should have the flow meter job complete. Um, it's ready to go. Well, it's ready to go now. It's just a few little brackets and things I'd like to make. And I still haven't had a chance to play with the slug for the John Deere tool. Um, a couple of followers, one follower was going to talk to his dad and um, see if they had the part number for that. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'll get time for that this week. Um, we'll just see. Um, I've got a little farm all lay here that belongs to Alan in the club and we I've got it here so I can make a bracket for some signs for our upcoming rally. And the other day I was buggering around and I could get the centres, you know, I can read a tape measure, but getting the angle right and I thought, oh, pain in the ass. So I I'll take you over and show you shortly. I've got a um, um a couple of bits of threaded rod and I chucked them in the lathe and I put a 60 degree point on them and um so now I can just put the steel there, I can actually sit a level on it to make sure I'm, I am properly level and just smack each one with a hammer and there's my mark to drill it. Cheats way, it, it's a good way for a bloke that doesn't know how to use a tape measure really. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Um, the other thing I've done, I've started tapping a few holes in the welding bench. Now, it's had some 5.8 holes that, my big welding bench, it used to be a face plate for Bundaberg Sugar at Bingra for one of the big old flatbed lathe I had here, the big Maxon, and it came with that. And um, it was too big for anything I needed, so I put legs on it and I made a welding bench out of it. But it's got holes in it where obviously they had something that they bolted to it and clamped bits of steel or something. And um, what I've decided to do there is um, tap 
some holes to three quarter UNC and I've got a couple of off cuts from the pins. When I was making the David Brown stabiliser brackets, um, I ended up with a heap of little off cuts and they're just a slug of thread probably, oh, say three quarters of an inch long, maybe an inch long. And um, I had to part them off to get the piece of pin I wanted to weld into the brackets that we got laser cut for that. So um, I had that out the other day to show um, Dean's dad. And um, yeah, and the penny dropped. I thought, well, I could, those little slugs that are left over, um, I could tidy them up. And I'm actually going to drill them out through the centre and put a UNC, a 3.8 UNC 3.816 thread in them. And that way, on the welding bench, I can actually use one of the clamping kits, the little clamping kit I have that I use for the big Alfred Herbert drill press there that I hardly ever use the clamps on it. But um, that way I can, um, if I'm welding something or I want to set some fences up, you know, some brackets on the bench so you can just line something up and do a few of them sort of thing, um, I can lock it up. But I'll take the camera over and I'll show you all that. Um, the other thing I did was those two water pumps that were sitting on the bench. Um, I pulled them apart and there's quite a difference. Um, yeah, the, the Bearco pump has two 6204 type bearings um, and, a, and they, they really narrow down to the impeller because we've been, you know, the water pump off, the Bearco water pump was off my gold tractor. And look, I reckon it only done 40, 50 hours, look I haven't done a lot of hours and the bearing failed um, and I was talking to my mate Rob the other day and he said oh those bloody Bearco water pumps I've been buying, he said oh I'm not going to buy them anymore, he says they don't seem to last you know 18 months or so and they're buggered and I said yeah okay that's, that's funny I've had the same experience with that so um, and I have a Sparex one that actually is a warranty claim and so I pressed that apart to see what was going on and it's actually got a damaged seal now, and the seal's been damaged for a bit. So we gave the fellow a warranty claim just to back our, back our parts up. But um, for it to break a hunk out of the seal, look, it could have happened in the factory, but um, probably been dropped. But um, look, I, I don't know. We can't say, but I'll, I'll try and show you that. So um, yeah, sit tight. Um, yeah, I'll take the camera over to the bench and we'll have a bit of a chat about some of this stuff, eh? Okay, over here. Look, there's one of the Plasma Dave's new gauge fronts. Get it all shiny so you can see how flash it is. And um, yeah, as you might recall, that's one of the old ones. And this was an old one. But yeah, the paper's still on them just to protect the acrylic because it can um, get crappy easily. And that's the big gauge with the, with the new glass on it. So... Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, now you can see the shine. Yeah, it's that clear that you <laughs> you can't see the shine. So um, these other ones, this two thousand pound one, um, that's one we're going to try and put on the scanner and take a scan of, and see if we can make a new face for that. So we'll just see how that goes. Now <clears throat> over on the bench here, this side here, that side is the Sparex water pump. This other side is the Bearco one. Now, one of the first things I noticed was on the Sparex flange here, the bolt-on flange. Now, this, I believe, see, Bearco pumps don't come with this, so this would have been the original off my tractor, I think. I can't be sure, but that's what I think. But the, the cotter pin on the Sparex pump is about 9.5 millimetres, where it's 3.8. On the original one look it shouldn't matter a lot um, the bloke was saying that by the time he um, and see the cotter pin tightens up on that flat he was saying by the time he got the cotter pin in um, some of the th and got it through um, this thread was a bit long and when the pulley went on he would have had to cut a piece of thread off which look in my in my eyes that wouldn't be a problem um, yeah, so by the time you by the time you popped him in, put the cotter pin in. It's like the old push bike cotter pin. And see, by the time you knock that in tight, it's well behind here. Yeah, 
see that one there just sticks out a little bit. He was complaining about that. Um, so can you see it there? Yeah, just. So he didn't like that. And that look, that's fine. And um, but the main thing that we gave him warranty for was because um, you can tell on the telltale here that it's been leaking. So um, looking at the seal here, I've, I've stretched the seal a bit and you can see down in there, there's a piece missing out of the seal. And yeah, just in there. So that's why it was leaking. Now why that happens, see what happens, the seal sits in the bottom of the pump here and the impeller sits here. And if the pump gets dropped, just the jar, even though it's supported by the bearing, just the jar can break the seals. So we don't know that that's happened. Um, but the interesting thing is the casting is a lot nicer than on the Bearco one, which I think I pointed out the other week. The Bearco is a very coarse casting. Now, the, this one here had a little spacer at this end here, and then this collar, the drive hub, come down. But by the time you brought this collar down, um, you can't bring it right down to the collar anyway because it was it would have failed on there. Um, so the collar is probably surplus to requirements, but anyway, it had it. Um, the difference between the Sparex and the Bearco is a lot of it is to do with this shaft. Now, you'll see this is a large bearing and this is a small bearing where the Bearco pump has a larger bearing top and bottom. So both ends. So look, whether that matters or not, I don't know. These bearings feel good and I know the Sparex ones are lasting better. Um, another thing to note though is on the end of the shafts, when you have a look, the, the Bearco pump is reduced from 5.8, look, probably down to half inch, something like that. So they reduce the, reduce the size of the shaft, where see the, the Sparex is the same size like it's supposed to be. So, so yeah, for some reason Bearco's, they're, they're, whoever makes their pumps for them has reduced that. And the impeller on the Sparex one, um, it's just made nicer, you know, like, you can see the Bearco one, it's a, the Bearco one might be a little heavier to feel, but, and you can see it's wider through these little veins on the impeller there, and, yeah, it's just, you know, even through here, the Sparex one's a bit thinner through there, so, so look, and, and look, this feels cheap and clunky, um, <coughs> But I mean, it still has a cassette type seal. I doubt there'd be any difference in the seals. Um, really? Oh, well, there's some difference. You can see the Sparex seal, the sealing surface is quite a bit wider than the Bearco one. So if I line that up on one side, you can see there's two, two or three millimetres difference there. So the seal surface on the Sparex one is bigger. Um, and yeah, where the Sparex impeller goes, they haven't machined the shaft away. They haven't relieved the shaft, so they've kept it the same size. So the Sparex one does look made better. The bearings do feel better. Um, why they've got a smaller bearing here, um, like the original ones I thought were the same size both ways, but the... You can see in there, there's a nice little shoulder for the bearing to go up against. And this one here, there's like a big area for the bearing to go in. Now, <clears throat> one thing with all these water pumps, all of them, is that you press, you undo the circlip, and you press down through the impeller. You always do that. Now, I machined, I had a little new way plate, and hang on, I'll just go and find it and show you. <clears throat> um, this is just a plate, it's a bit of a Massey Ferguson tool, and you can see I've machined down there, so 
what that does, that gives the bearings a bit of clearance. So when I press to get the, um, yeah, the well, you set the water pump on there and you press down through the impeller. So that supports the full housing around here so the bearings and all can push out through. So I made it a millimetre or two big just so that it would go through. So, and that, that funny enough, I, I didn't plan it like that. It just happened as the, um, the plate that I made for pressing the Ferguson axle flanges off, the rear axles, um, this fits in there nicely. So anyway, that just, that's just more ass than that. Um, oh, the circlips are a bit different. The Sparex has bigger tags on the circlips than Bearco. I don't think that matters a toss. Um, just different companies. Just something to show you. Yeah, so, um, so all in all, the, the, this hub's slightly different. I have had people say that the Sparex hub um, they've just had to open the holes a bit on their pulley because the holes weren't 100% in line. Um, it's not something I've had, but I have heard of it. Um, but anyway, that's just the difference between those two pumps. I wanted to see why this one was leaking. And look, I, I actually have a seal on, over there. I, I've had a seal in stock. And um, what I might do is I might reassemble this one. Like those bearings are brand new. Um, old mate reckoned he put it on and it was leaking so um, I might clean the shaft up, give it a polish um, I might pop the seals out of the bearings and make sure there's no moisture ever got into them seeing as it was leaking, particularly this one and I might just slide that back together and put a new seal in I might be able to show you that next week or something I'll, I'll just see and um, I'll just have it sitting here as a reconditioned pump if I need a, a pump for something all right, let's go up to the welding bench. Okay, we're at the welding bench here. The welding bench is about an inch and a quarter thick steel. And um, as I was saying, it, it was a face plate for the big lathe when I got it. And it, it has a, quite a few holes in it. And like this hole here and this hole here, um, they're in line. And then this, these two rows of holes coming away from those two, um, they're at 90 degrees. So we still have big holes, um, you know, that we can drop things in and tie down. So, but what I'm doing currently is using their trusty Trefle X, I'm hand tapping. Now, some of these holes here, I've done two, I'm, I started this one and then Grumpy Dave come over for a yarn. So that, that stopped work. So these are the little slugs that I have left over from making the David Brown tools, um, the David Brown um, sway bars. Yeah, the sway brackets that go into your final drive. And so, and I've just had them, <laughs> I didn't throw them out. And um, so by the time they screw in here, and they do screw in, I've had them in a dozen times. They just don't screw in when the camera's on. Yeah, so, um, because of that little shoulder there, um, I'm, I'm wondering how I'm gonna go with that. But anyway, so, they can go down in here, and we can have a row of them along here, a row of them along here, and a row there at 90. And <clears throat> I am thinking of with this nut here, um, parting the nut off, you know, cut it in half and so when we come down here we can actually have a jam nut to hold the thread there and we can have a use the nut as a flat surface for tying something to and the other thing we're doing is with this you know they'll all recognize these tie down clamps that you use on milling machines and drill presses and things like that this is a small set i've had and it's 3 8 16 38 unc <coughs> pardon me and yeah you, know, you get a whole kit and it's got like t nuts and um you know stands and brackets and you know flange nuts and all that sort of thing there's a whole heap of them different length bolts and different lengths of everything so what i'm thinking of doing is getting these popping them up in the lathe there um Maybe cutting them off flush here. I haven't made my mind up there yet. We'll just see. And um, 
I'm going to bore them and put a 3.8 UNC thread down them. So when you've got them locked in down here and you want to clamp something down, you can use this clamping system that we already have to clamp a part down or you know, hold something in place while you weld it or um, you, know, you want to do a bit of setup or something like that. And it's just about getting, you know, making it a bit handy, a bit better to use. And you, know, you could actually, um, I was thinking of actually having a bit of steel coming across here um, that I can just sit up against these two and clamp down and so I know it's at 90. So, you know, if you're just doing a little bracket or something, you, you know. So, um, the idea is, so, if I, if I have a 3.8 UNC female thread down here, well, that means I can have it in any one of these 10 holes. Um, I can use any clamp, you know, I can, I, can, I can come up from underneath, I can do whatever I like with it. And even if I... If I use these T slots here, oh, well, I can't probably do that because I've I've peened them over years ago. But I could run a tap through that, and you can actually have these fellas sitting there and run a fence, you know, on a particular angle. If you want a particular angle for a bracket and you want it just to hold in place, so yeah, 45 or whatever, you could actually run a fence with those fellas. So, so I've got quite a few of these. I've made a lot of them over the years and I, I don't think I'll probably chuck many out. So that's the plan at least. I think um, I'm thinking of yeah, parting off the nuts. Um, have these a set height um, because they do go... Oh, that must be a bit of rubbish in the thread which might be a problem I have coming up that I'm bloody not 100% aware of yet. But yeah, they do screw down. There's a little bit of a, a... When you cut the thread, it's raised a bit. So I do have to sand the top here and probably run a, a deburrer there. So, But yeah, like that there with a with a little thread up. It, it, just, it just opens up a lot of options. There is a bigger hole here that's a bit over an inch. Um, yeah, that'd be... Oh, that'd be an inch. This would be an inch and a quarter. And so I can like put, there's a, there's a square stud pattern in the middle here. Um, I don't actually want to thread them, I just want to use them. I may, um, I'm not sure, but I may just make up some pins to go in there with this same thread in it. So I can just drop a couple of pins to sit something at right angles or something like that. So. Anyway, it's a nice place to sit here in the doorway doing that. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been doing as I've been fiddling along. I have a bit of a break and I think, yep, yeah, I'll just drill another, I'll tap another hole. They're, they need to be opened up a little bit, but I haven't got a mag drill to open them up a little bit. So, um, these do go in all right, but like I say, they, they form a little burr. So, um, so we'll just see. So, yeah, we should be able to have a bar across and then just right angles and yeah, look, just for setup, not that I'm a fab shop or a big fab shop, it's just, I can just see how it'll be handy, and I've got the bloody thing here, so, um, yeah, I might as well make it useful. All right, let's go back over to the chair, eh? Look, this is just a little clip I <laughs> I nearly forgot to show you. These little fellas here, they're just bits of threaded rod, and I've put a taper on the end there, and I've popped them in the holes where the scufflers mount on this little farm all day. And the, they have a lot of holes. I've put, this is Alan's tractor and I've cleaned all the threads and I've put little corks to block it off for him. But the idea with these little brackets here is that I can pop a bit of steel there, not that bit because it's too small. This bit here. So I can pop a bit of steel there and the idea is to make sure that the tyres are pumped up correctly and I can bring a level down on top of any steel bracket and if I know the tyres are pumped up correctly and I can put a level on the top of the steel bracket so I know that if I work at 90 degrees off the steel bracket that bolts onto here for our sign the sign won't be wonky, it'll be sitting nice and true. So. 
what I've done, I've, I've made two of these up for these holes there. Once I get it all level, I'm just going to go smack, smack onto the plate that comes across here with a hammer, and that'll give me my centres. And then I'll know that if I work off the, um, if I work off this piece of plate, and I work right angles off here. So if I know that's level, and I work at right angles with the brackets coming off to hold signs. Well, it won't look silly. It'll just, um, it'll be nice and square and lined up and all that sort of thing. So, so yeah, that's how I, <laughs> that's, that's what you do when you don't know how to use a tape measure. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've just made those little, little studs there and I can just put the plate on once it's level, go bang and that'll, that'll mark the holes for me. And, um, yeah, away we go. So there you go. I just thought I'd show you that. Well, there you go. <laughs> now you know as much as me, which is not much. But anyway, um, look, thanks for dropping by. Um, yeah, well, next week when you see me, I'll be an old retired old bloke, bloody looking for bloody um, bargains at the bottle shop, I suppose, and shopping for the cheap veggie mite. No, <laughs> we'll see, but... Um, but look, have a good week, everyone. Thanks again for dropping by, and um, yeah, look, we'll catch you all next week, eh?